Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Carolina Weather Authority meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest uh, YouTube videos. And, of course, follow us on carolinawxauthority.com as we continue to update you guys on ESA EOS. And on our Facebook page as well, we're going to continue to provide you with our latest updates. Uh, well, it's Monday morning, and right now in the tropics, really the only thing on the map we're concerned with is ESA EOS, which still from the National Hurricane Center officially is a tropical storm, although we've seen um, enough evidence to make us believe that this thing could be Category 1 hurricane. I mean, again, four mile per hour difference between tropical storm and, and hurricane, so not a major difference in our forecast. Also on the map, watching a disturbance south of Bermuda, which probably won't turn out to be a whole lot much, and then another disorganized wave coming off of Africa. So really, Isa Eos is the only thing we have to worry about. Uh, and here's a location now. It's east of Jacksonville, Florida, tracking northward at 13 miles per hour. So it is starting to pick up some forward momentum, and uh, looks like it's going to be aiming the Carolinas, aiming for the Carolinas late tonight, and then moving quickly up into New England um, during the night tomorrow night. So it's already starting to accelerate and pull northward. Here's our disturbance with a 60% chance of intensification. Um, here's the latest from her, her tropical storm Isaias still, 70 mile per hour wind. We did see last night um, some evidence that it may have become a hurricane, but it was not officially upgraded. Again, we're not going to argue over it at this point, but still a chance that it could be a hurricane before landfall. And now we've got a hurricane warning out. And this is uh, for the upper coast of South Carolina and the lower coast of North Carolina. Um, currently, our storm is moving northward, starting to make a right turn, though, and uh, pulling away from Florida and away from Georgia and eventually toward South Carolina this afternoon and evening, and then making landfall overnight tonight around or just after midnight. Uh, looks like very near the North Carolina-South Carolina border, and then accelerating off to the north-northeast, moving very quickly through eastern North Carolina Tuesday morning, and then Tuesday, midday, and afternoon, we'll be moving through the mid-Atlantic states. Tuesday evening through the northeast, Tuesday night and overnight into Wednesday morning through New England. And then falling apart as it becomes extra tropical on Wednesday across eastern Canada. So a large chunk of the eastern U.S. has some sort of watcher warning at the coast. Uh, actually, all the way up to the... Uh, Potomac River close to D.C. is under a tropical storm watch, if you can believe that. All the Chesapeake Bay under a watch or warning, and all of the North Carolina, South Carolina coasts over a warning. The red indicates the hurricane warning, where our most intense wind and storm surge is, is expected overnight tonight. Uh, the blue indicates tropical storm warnings, and the yellow tropical storm watches. Mm -hmm. Um, so currently our winds are 70 miles per hour. The uh, center, 30.2 north, 80.1 west. That puts it pretty much about a almost 100 miles east of Jacksonville, and uh, we'll be narrowing in on the coast this evening. Um, taking a look at the satellite imagery, we're starting to see um, what was maybe some organization last night and still a pretty good center at this point, but no eye. Uh, but you can see that the outflow, which looks pretty good last night, is starting to um, feel some of the effects of wind shear from the south and west. Uh, however, we still believe with the warm water and with the relaxation of shear this afternoon that there is a chance this thing could be strengthening right up to landfall as a Category 1 hurricane, and that's what the official forecast is. Uh, hurricane Hunter aircraft, I'll be honest with you, um, looked like they picked up some stronger winds yesterday than they are this morning, so the storm looks like Maybe it was a hurricane last night and back down the tropical storm this morning, but still an opportunity for it to strengthen to a Category 1 hurricane at this point. Category 2 is looking a little bit less likely right now than we thought last night because that intensification and organization trend um, has stopped. And that's not a complete surprise to us because this storm has been fighting for its life pretty much its entire lifespan. Uh, but definitely uh, still has a chance to pick up some punch over these warm waters and Regardless of whether or not it's um, a 70 mile per hour storm or a 90 per hour storm, it's going to cause damage where it comes on shore, especially north and east of the center. Um, let's see, uh, we'll take a look real quick at our forecast models, and you can see very strong agreement in the track right now. There's, there's no deviation left or right anymore. Every model takes it on shore pretty much near Calabash or Holden Beach, North Carolina. Um, 24 hours from this 2 a.m., so pretty much that landfall is going to be right before 2 in the morning, maybe midnight or 1 a.m., um, and then by morning it's already up close to the Virginia border, and then in the afternoon we'll be across New Jersey, and then in the evening over New York or Western Mass, and then by early Wednesday morning we'll start to see it accelerate across New England and up into Canada. So it'll be a fast-moving system for us. 
Intensity forecasts show us just below hurricane strength and still a possibility that the system will be strengthening into a hurricane at Category 1. In fact, half of our models now show that happening probably this afternoon and especially this evening. So there's a very decent chance this storm is strengthening right up until landfall. Um, I don't think it's going to happen this morning. It may be more this afternoon and evening, though. And then once it makes landfall, slowly things do uh, weaken. It's going to take a while, though, to get it down to depression. Probably by the time it does that, it's already up through Maine and into Canada. So I'm going to stop real quick and, and tell you we may have a tropical storm in Maine. And by the way, if you followed in uh, June, tropical storm Cristobal um, was still tropical in Wisconsin. So this may be a sign of the changing times um, to have tropical systems that far north in the U.S. Um, real quick, we'll look at the uh, H-Wharf. It's showing it's strengthening um, steadily, but not rapidly, up until landfall. This is now 11 tonight, so about midnight, looks like. Um, does show winds offshore that could be of hurricane intensity with gusts maybe to 80, 85 miles per hour, um, and then weakening as it comes on shore. This is 2 in the morning tomorrow, and uh, looks like it'll be near um, Rocky Mount or um, just east of Rocky Mount by 5 a.m. and weakening to a tropical storm. All the strong winds at that point will be over the Pamlico Sound and the Albemarle Sound, but there may still be a core in here of strong wind, uh, perhaps with winds of 50, 60 miles per hour sustained. On the western side, we'll see less wind, but more rain, it looks like. And then over Virginia, still a possibility as this thing picks up some jet stream energy, it could strengthen a little bit over the waters. So if you're in Virginia Beach or into the lower parts of the Chesapeake, be prepared for that tomorrow morning. Um, and then tomorrow afternoon, still getting battered on the mid-Atlantic coast. Uh, with some gale force winds. New Jersey could see winds over 60 miles per hour in Atlantic City, so very much uh, could be a problem in areas that got hit by Sandy, um, and then we'll start to see weakening as this system moves uh, farther northward. So that's a look at our system. Um, as far as our watches and warnings, this is the, um, the area that has a hurricane warning. This is tropical storm warning, uh, tropical storm watch up here, and then flash flood watch to the west of that. Some areas are under both, by the way, as we would expect. Um, the threat for flooding uh, certainly increases tonight over eastern South Carolina and into the Triangle and areas north, basically along Interstate 95, and this will be late tonight. And then if we look at tomorrow's excessive rainfall, moving away from the Triangle and then affecting much of Virginia, Maryland, through the Philadelphia metro area into the west of New York City. Um, and then the following day, um, that's already out of here, and actually we could have a little bit of heavy rain from thunderstorms in the afternoon on uh, looks like Thursday from the trough moving through. So behind this storm, some more rain possible. Um, rainfall amounts, we expect to be generally three to six inches along and to the west of I-95. The triangle is going to be close. Eastern areas could get more. Um, DC could actually get swamped if you believe this run of the GFS. Same goes for Charleston and Beaufort, Myrtle Beach, and especially Conway and areas just inland could have some flooding. Um, we'll take a look as well. Um, that's the European model, pretty much in the same boat as the GFS, which we'd like to see that agreement. Um, take a look real quick at the um, potential for river flooding, and it is uh, certainly a possibility over the rivers of eastern North Carolina or South Carolina, so the PD and the Waccamaw River, as well as the Lumber and the Cape Fear River. Uh, the Tar River and Noose River probably have a better shot at some flooding, so we'll have to very much keep an eye on that. Places like Smithfield, um, maybe Tarboro and Greenville. Uh, also the possibility of some flooding in the Virginia rivers and up into the northeast. So a lot of people are going to be impacted by the potential for flash flooding. Um, we do have an extreme impact of wind and maybe tornadoes overnight tonight around Wilmington and just inland uh, with a high risk of some power outages and flooding in areas in red and a moderate risk uh, to the west of that area. Maybe some flooding, uh, certainly some isolated tornadoes along and east of 95 um, during the day tomorrow. Um, and then when we get back to Charlotte and the triad, we're not as concerned at that point because most of the bad weather's off to your east. And I did forget to show you the radar, but here is our center of uh, Isai Eos. Not closed off, but we're starting to see these outer bands of rain get close to Savannah and Hilton Head Island. Uh, this afternoon, Charleston and into Myrtle Beach should see those outer bands moving in, and then Wilmington by this evening. Um, we do already see showers popping up ahead of this, but the main bulk of rain and wind will be arriving tonight. All right, everyone, thanks for joining us, and please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and uh, we'll keep you posted. We'll probably have some live feeds coming on later on today and tonight. Take care, everyone.